Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you're just going to have to take my word for it that I was definitely, absolutely, 100% going to make this video well over a year ago. Well before they announced the remake. I can promise you that. Come on. Do, the question is, do you trust me? Please don't answer that. Look at this menu skeleton. <laughs> it's like, ah, you want to play a new game? I got one right here for you. Best new games in town right here. Just want to click here. Uh, anyway, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to a little look at the old PlayStation 1 version of Medieval. So what it was, I don't normally make Halloween videos, and that's a trend that I'm continuing, which is strange because, you know, I play horror games more than anything else on the channel, so you'd think that I would. Saying it out loud now, I'm starting to realize how strange that is. Uh, but I thought last this last year, 2017, remember 2017? No, me neither. But it was 2017, and I was thinking, oh, maybe we should make a Halloween video, but there was nothing out at the time that I really wanted to look at that was new. And I thought, well, what would make a dumb, goofy kind of Halloween, but not quite Halloween video? And I thought of this. I thought of Medieval because you know, it, it's got a it's got a bit of spooks about it, but it's still pretty fun and cartoonish. And I used to play this game a lot as a kid, a lot, a lot. This is actually the this took me a while to set up, but this is the the place. I'm on my PlayStation 3, and this is the PS1 classics download thing you used to be able to do, uh, which is a shame you can't do that anymore. But anyway, so that's where we are right now. But I, I did try and get my original PlayStation 1 version working. I actually have the copy here, right here, with a big sticker on the front on the front that says Dual Shock compatible. That was when vibration was like a, a new thing. <laughs> So they used to put that on the front. Oh, I'll read in the back as well. Featuring awesome lighting effects. Unique characters and a humorous and thrilling story in an action-packed RPG-style adventure. I don't know how accurate that is, really. Oh, and this uses the old, like, age rating scheme as well. This is not suitable for 3 to 10-year-olds. This is only 11 plus. <laughs> 11 plus. <laughs> seems so arbitrary now. Anyway, let's put that aside. So yeah, I, I did try and get my old PlayStation 1 version working. And, I mean, let's examine this now, now that we know that the remake is happening. It's kind of weird because, okay, Crash Bandicoot. Everybody knows Crash Bandicoot, right? Even people who don't play games a lot kind of know Crash Bandicoot. Like, you might have played that as a kid and never played anything else, right? And now you're like 20 years older, but still you look at Crash, a remake, and go, Oh, cool, yeah, I'll play that again. And it sold really well. Spyro, you can kind of say the same thing. You know, if you didn't play Crash, you probably played Spyro, or both. So yeah, I can I can see that trilogy coming out and people going, Yeah, absolutely. And that, as far as I know, that sold pretty well as well. Maybe not as well as Crash, but it's up there. Medieval, I don't know anyone else who, who owned this. But I do remember it being on... Uh, on the PlayStation, on one of the PlayStation One demo discs, as was Crash and Spyro. Actually, oh my God, they're just remaking all the PlayStation One demos. It's just, <laughs> is that true? It's just dawned on me. Uh, can we expect maybe like a Hercules remake? Oh no, I, I suppose maybe Kingdom Hearts has that covered. But yeah, I, I I remember as a kid liking this, but I didn't really know anyone else who played it or had it, so. I'm throwing it out there to the comments. Is this something that you guys played when you were younger or have any sort of knowledge of whatsoever? Look at this guy with his flared trousers walking in. Uh, this game used to scare me. These guys right here, that used to creep me out. And I don't think it's because they are being zombified. I think it's because the sort of character models are so weird anyway <laughs> and they don't they, you know this is a very uh, specific era and these guys don't they don't move well they don't move properly it's a bit unnatural I mean look at them oh god a bit sort of puppet like I mean that's creepy anyway I don't want a creepy child axe murderer I don't need any of that and you got the classic Zambambos. 
of course. That's a scary noise also. I was young, come on. I don't think I was 11 plus, so maybe maybe the, maybe the age rating was uh, was spot on for this one, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, I, I just thought, let's take a look. It's being remade, and I, I, I do remember it rather fondly. So, um, let's take a look. Let's, yeah, new game, I can't even select load game. But this game, it did have a lot going for it, I thought. I do like the premise of the main character as being this, you know, amazing knight who just actually got killed straight away. As we're about to see. I mean, it's got a lot of charm to it, this game. And actually, as a main character... Dan script. As a main character, Sir Daniel Fortescue does, like I say, he has a lot of charm in those old it bones. risen again. Sir Daniel Fortescue. See? The hero of Galomere who fell at the first charge. The fog of war and the shrouds of time conspire to turn the arrow fodder into the savior of the day. But we know better. <laughs> Let it alone. Fate has given it a second chance. A chance to forget the ignoble truth. A chance to defeat Zarok and live up to the legend. We hope it does well. Don't know why they refer to me as it. I suppose it's a little bit of an it. So yeah, this is just a kind of 3D action game. Oops, I uh, I ripped my own arm off. So I gotta remember these controls. Oh, we got a nice big jump there. How do I actually run? Oops, I threw my arm away. Oh, and it comes back. Look at that. <laughs> I got a block. I got an attack. Look at that. That's a heroic knight right there. Give me this sword. How do I uh, how do I run? I know I do have a run. Oh, I have a charge attack too. Oh, double tap to run. Okay. I, it's all coming back to me now. So yeah, this is... Um, like I say, if you're not familiar with PlayStation 1 era games, this is probably not going to look great. <laughs> but don't worry. Don't worry about it, because this is... Uh, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I hesitate to call it a classic. Like, I, I'm, I'm thinking of it as a classic, but obviously I have good memories of it. And it is being remade, which leads me to believe that maybe it is... I don't know. Can I interact with these? Yes. Treasure. Things to pick up. We got keys. We got, um... There's a bit of a completionist aspect to this as well. There are actually two endings based on, the, you know, if you decide to complete it in the proper way or not. Um, and it's actually got quite a lot of cool stuff about it. Anyway, I'm not gonna... I'm not playing the whole thing. We'll see how far we get before I get bored or my PlayStation 3 crashes, which it's, you know, want to do. Anyway, let's get out of the crypt. Pretty easy first level, honestly. I mean, that wasn't too tough. The, 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 <laughs> the later levels get a bit more difficult. Anyway, I really, really super like this map screen. And uh, you can see the sort of the fog of war uh, above me there, which clears out as you sort of go through the game. And you can open up different pathways, and I think you have to complete every level. Something in the back of my mind says there's maybe optional areas, but I'm pretty sure. Even though you can go, at some points you can go uh, one direction or another, you still pretty much have to complete everything. Anyway, yeah, we're out here. Big action. Look at this. God, it looks great. Skyboxes? Who needs them? Just, it's a horror game. Just make it all black. It's fine. Anyway, I kind of, like I say, I kind of like uh, Sir Dan here as a character. 
he's kind of badass, even though he... Oops. Even though he did fall at the first charge, like it said. Um, I kind of like... I kind of like his... Uh, kind of like his stride here. Kind of like his goofy little run and his head bobs up and down as you go. And uh, he doesn't have a whole lot of dialogue, but he's got a little bit of attitude to him, which is great. Hello. And that noise. That noise of the zombies. I don't think I've ever heard... That used to creep me out a little bit. Like, you know you've hit some flesh with that noise, you know? It's got a real ugh about it. But I'm quite excited for this to be... For this to be remade. I mean, this has a... Uh, this has quite a few problems with it. There's quite uh, quite a few sections where you've got a platform. And uh, platforming in these days was never the, the most sort of nailed-on thing in the world. This is health, which for some reason is just... Spewing out of the ground. But I can live with that. Combat is... Pretty simplistic. X, 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 dead. <laughs> Not too much of a problem. But uh, there are, there's actually quite a lot of different weapons here. Like, by the end of it, you get all kinds of different weapons. Uh, although, the, well, there's different weapon classes, I guess. Like, you get different variants of swords, different variants of hammers, and etc. and throwing weapons and stuff like that, with a few sort of specials added in there. For good measure. But you can sort of, uh, hopefully you can make it out in the top right hand corner there. That every time I kill an enemy I seem to be adding to this sort of percentage gauge. And uh, that is to do with that little chalice over there, which we will be picking up soon enough. I mean, it's kind of amazing that... Oh, God. But even uh, a lot of later levels have quite a few sort of gimmicks to them. But I, I'm, I'm sort of... Normally, I don't really like gimmicky stuff, but... I don't know. Every level in this seems to have something different going on. So, although this is pretty basic early on, it does get a lot more complex. I really wish I could turn the goddamn camera around. There we go. Perfect. I do like the soundtrack as well. It's got quite a memorable soundtrack to me. But again, I don't know whether it's just the veil of nostalgia. I'm really trying to... See that icon in the bottom right sometimes? That's telling me, oh no, you can't move the camera. Don't even think about moving the ca camera. <laughs> uh, it's amazing that it puts that in. Oh yeah, oh yeah, you can see how this camera is just really going really well. Oh, there you go. The chalice can now be collected, so now we can go back. And this is what I mean about the completionist uh, aspect. So there are a, there are a few levels where you can just complete... You can, you can complete any level by just kind of running past everything. You know, if you don't have the stuff required, if you don't have, you know, if you don't have the weapons or whatever required. So you don't actually have to collect these. But, um... They are incredibly useful because, as you see, when you collect one, it says the Hall of Hero. The Hall of Heroes awaits, and it's basically a, a sort of bonus thing at the end of every level, where you travel to the Hall of Heroes and get some kind of upgrade. Oh God, that worked out pretty well. Yeah, some kind of upgrade, whether it be a weapon or health or money or just something. Ooh, hello. Speaking of money. I don't know who left these treasure chests just above ground in the graveyard. Not, like, not even buried. <laughs> hello. Oh, yeah, and you can buy... Oh, I forgot you could buy stuff. Totally forgot there were shops in this. But, yeah, it's, in terms of the remake, I, I can imagine this being... I, I can imagine them making a pretty much, like a pretty faithful remake in terms of they're not going to really change anything like crash was just incredible you know but they didn't they didn't actually change all that much <laughs> like level design all the same do all the same stuff it's just just look great and play great it's kind of what i want from this copper shield Shields are actually really good, not just for blocking, but you can also attack with shields as well. 
So yes, the Hall of Heroes. Don't ask me how you get here. <laughs> it just sort of happens. Welcome to the Hall of Heroes, where the bravest warriors from history spend eternity feasting, singing, and arm wrestling. If they think you're worthy enough, you may be able to persuade them to give you a new weapon. Bit misleading, you don't have to persuade anybody, you just have to get the chalice and get here. To pay homage to the heroes, stand in front of their designated statues and await spiritual guidance. And they have a big chalice in the middle. This always felt like a... quite a lonely area. Because there's nobody actually here. They're just all statues. <laughs> and you know which one you're supposed to go to because it glows green. And then you stand here. Captain Fortescue, it's me, Canny Tim. Does the battle go well? <laughs> How I wish I could fight at your side again, sir. But hold, you could take my crossbow. But hold. Rapid fire and you can ricochet the darts off walls to shoot around corners. I used it at the Battle of Galamir. After you were slain, I shot Zarek's champion, Lord Kardok. A clean kill through the eye at some thousand yards. <laughs> Will you accept? I don't even know why there's a no. Why would you ever not accept? Not that there's anything clever about shooting someone in the eye, sir. <laughs> oh. Goodbye, sir. And then you get a new weapon. And they are really important. Like, the crossbow, I know, is like a super important weapon, especially for an upcoming level. But yeah, it's, it's, got, it's pretty good, actually. You get a lot of cool stuff from these guys. Some really important, unique stuff, uh, which is used for, to get better endings and everything. It's it's quite an important place. But like I say, it just gives it that nice little completionist aspect to it, if you're into that. <laughs> Huzzah! Strike a pose, Dan. Here he is. Disco Inferno. So, even from the shackles of death, my old enemy pursues me. You're too late, Fortescue. Already my army has risen from the grave. You will never leave this necropolis. <laughs> Voice acting is just... top draw. <laughs> How are those boulders? They, they're like growing out of their mouths. Uh, anyway. I don't understand what Zarok's deal is, because it establishes in the introduction that we destroyed him utterly. Like, it says those words. Destroyed the sorcerer utterly. And then he, for some reason, just comes back, and it's never explained how, but there you go. I mean, looking around this game, you know, I don't demand explanations for everything. Well, that's a bomb. Don't think it hurts me, but I still don't want to be around it. <laughs> That's a hell of an explosion. All right, let's make our way up. So this is the first. This is the first example of like every level has something different. And I feel like a lot of PlayStation One games have this <laughs> on them. There you go. You can actually just hug the wall here and just kind of quite easily get past. Oh, these guys are creepy. Headless running at you, I don't like that. And here's where we get the club. And the club's kind of an interesting weapon, because A, you can smash boulders like that, which is super useful. You can also, if you hold it over a fire, oops, not burn yourself, but now you can turn it into a flaming club. Look at that. I mean, that, that's a mechanic I had not seen anywhere else at this point. Groundbreaking stuff from Medieval. I bet you didn't expect it, but there it is. <laughs> and it allows you to go into these uh, sort of hidden areas as well. Hello. Sorry, I'm blocking your <laughs> your vision with my club. So you can see I'm already I'm in the second level, but there's already quite a bit going on in terms of weapons. And you can always use your arm. You'll never run out of ways to attack. <laughs> because your arm will always be there. 
Now then, can I get past this? I seem to... There's something in the back of my mind. Yes, I can. A guide to covens. Don't think I need that. So that's a fire. I think I might need that fire for something. Yes, I do. I needed to unlock that. So you can see there's kind of... It's not just sort of run through and fight stuff. There's a little bit of... There's a little bit of light, quote, unquote, puzzle solving. If you can just... If you can just... There we go. And you can see in the top left, uh, my club actually has a percentage to it. So it does break, and if you break it, you need to either find a new one, or I think you can repair it. Oh, God. Chalice can now be collected. Beautiful. Beautiful. Don't know where it is, but still. I got a witch talisman. I got another copper shield. And my shield also has a, a numerical value. Um, it does degrade as you use it. But you get better shields. All the heroes are weights. God, this room has everything. And a bit of moonage. Alright, let's get out of here. That Witch Talisman, I don't even think you use that in this level. I think that's later on you can use that. God, there's so much about this game that I... Well, there's a lot that I remember. There's a lot that I don't remember. But I know you don't need a Witch Talisman for this level. So yeah, you might think just use the club here, but I... Oh, God. But I just kind of brute force this. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, so they might reuse a few of the same voice actors, but whatever. <laughs> it's fine. They're all demonic-esque individuals. They can afford to have similar voices. I love how his head seems to get there after his body. <laughs> Back from the battle so soon? It must think it is a hero by now. Stop saying it. But only a true hero is worthy of a place in the Hall of Heroes. See the ghostly statue of your fraudster self? Whoa, fraudster. If turn solid, a true hero you will be. I do kind of like the idea that, that you know, Fortescue, he's got, he's got something to prove, you know? He was leading the charge, sure, but he did go down straight away. <laughs> take more than an army of the evil dead to throw your strider. I have something that may help you on your quest, Captain. I give it to you freely, though I have no idea what it is. Oh yeah, always accept that. So yeah, these little greens are just free, uh, well yeah, life bottles, but basically when your your health does go down pretty quick. Um, and, if it, and there are ways of healing, as we've seen, but basically those will completely revive you. Uh, they're just sort of extra lives, if, if nothing else. But yes, here's our statue. So we're not considered a true hero just yet. Even though even though it is ghostly, it does... You, you can hit it. It exists. <laughs> Eventually, uh, I, I seem to remember that one, if you come to the Hall of Heroes, I don't know how many times it takes. Maybe it's if you get every single one. Every single chalice. But eventually you can hear sort of, you know, cheering and laughing and whatever else. And there is a there is a second floor, but we, I guess we can't access it yet until we've got everything on the on the ground floor. Start at the bottom, guys. Everyone has to start at the bottom. All right, onto the hilltop mausoleum. They really should just remake those demo discs completely. And I don't even mean make full games; just remake the demo disc with the demos on it. <laughs> Oh, wow. The age of playing demos. Those are fun times. Oh, God. So now there's weird pig monsters. They will try and burn you. Oh, 
I'm just gonna press X. I'm just gonna swing my sword, and if you run into it, it's your own fault. Oh god. Still early days yet, some enemies do require a bit more thinking about it. A bit more strategy, you know. I remember this took me a long time to... Oh god. I remember this little, uh, this little bit of this level took me a long time to figure out. Did they just keep coming? <laughs> but uh, yeah, we can go down here. Good, eh? But yeah, playing demos, man. I used to spend a long time playing those demo discs. Because demos were so infuriating because... Okay, if a demo is like, you get to play this level, then that's, that's fine, right? You just play the level. But a lot of demos were, uh, were timed back in the day. So it was like, you can play for this amount of time and see how far you can get. And they always used to infuriate me because... It was that thing of, okay, I have to get further. I have to perfect it. I have to perfect this demo and get absolutely as far as it will take me. And I never used to, I always used to wonder, like, is the whole game here, but it's just timed? Like, can you complete the game? <laughs> Probably not. I doubt they would put the whole game on. It would not fit, for a start. So that's a stupid idea, but still. This was when I was little, so... I did used to end up thinking, God, if I could just complete that, I'd never have to buy it. I could just play the game right here on the demo. Oh my God, just roll. Again, something a little bit new about this level. You got these, uh, you got these floor sort of. You got the glass on the floor here, but you can just smash it. How I wish I could do this in all Tomb Raider games. That would be extremely helpful. They do take about as much health off you as those Tomb Raider games as well. Oh, I need a blue... A Moonstone. I'm not even sure if these pig guys are even enemies. They just seem to... <laughs> they run away more than they attack me. <laughs> oh my god, am I the bad guy? Oh yeah, oh and some of them... Steal your weapons as well. I think what the, the ones without the torches have the ability to steal your weapons. So you have to then kill them with, obviously, another weapon to get that weapon back. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of stuff to take in. Yeah, there you go. When they jump at you like that, they're trying to steal your stuff. Look at this guy. Oh, this guy's great. Like, he absolutely loves his job. Look at this. The would-be Phantom of the Opera longs to play a new tune, but he seems doomed to repeat the same chords of despair over and over. <laughs> God, I wish every character in every game in the world could push blocks as quick as Sir Dan here. Look at this. Alright, so I do remember a little bit about what's coming next, so let's uh, see what happens. So this guy used to scare me, <laughs> and I don't know why, maybe it was the build-up, the heartbeat and all that. Oh. Yeah, this guy is like, dodge, 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 and then crossbow the heart.
And I remember this was kind of tough, because I wasn't used to, like, oh, you need to use a certain weapon to beat this boss. Oh, God. Jeez. I don't even remember some of these attacks. But yeah, I wasn't used to the idea of, oh, I have to actually use a ranged weapon to use to kill this boss. So I just kind of was there swinging my sword. I had absolutely no idea what to do. <laughs> I'm not, not entirely sure how to dodge that one. God, this is quite a nightmare on the thumbs. I'm using my PS3 controller. It's never the easiest thing in the world. But that is pretty radical. <laughs> As like a death animation, that's really cool. And I got a big key. Ah, Fortescue! What's this I hear about that Archcad Zarog still being alive? Thought you killed the fella. <laughs> Never mind, you old warhorse. Better show him what's what, eh? I expect Johnny Zombie's a bit more of a handful than you remember. How are you doing for weapons? <laughs> Here. Reuse the clip, reuse the voice clips, it's fine. It'll smash anything and it won't fall apart like a club. I only ever get to use it cracking walnuts around this place. <laughs> Nonsense, Fortescue. I won't take no for an answer. Knock a few heads for old Stanyar Iron Hill. I won't say no for an answer. I wonder what would happen if I actually said no. So now we get a big old hammer, exactly the same as the club, but it's stronger and it won't fall apart. I love being able to charge attacks while running. <laughs> and you can always go back to previous levels in order to sort of open stuff up and, and get those chalices. You won't always be able to get them straight away. Okay, so this game has cheats. <laughs> which fortunately still work, which is great. So, let's put on super cheat mode, which gives me pretty much everything. Debug, just Dan. I don't even know what that is. But uh, yes, hopefully this will open the game up a little bit more so we can look at stuff. Beautiful. Lift the fog of war for me, cheats. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the reason I'm doing this is obviously I'm not going to play the entire game, but I want you guys to see how big the entire game is. I mean, the map actually in its entirety looks really cool, and there are all kinds of different uh, levels to go to. The Asylum, every horror game of any kind, no matter how sort of cartoonish, must have some kind of... <laughs> Must have an asylum. The pools of the ancient dead. The lake. What else have we got? The crystal caves. I don't even quite remember that. The gallows gauntlet. And then eventually you head towards the uh, the final level, which is the ghost ship. The entrance hall. And then you head around the time device, which is, I think is the shortest level in the world. Anyway... There is one level that uh, I remember being very interesting, so let's go and check that out. One of the creepier levels, just because it's got these weird humans in it. Look at that, I don't want to be anywhere near any of those people. But yes, because we uh, have all the weapons, we can actually take a look at all the kind of different things you can have. Uh, oh yeah, you get different types of swords. The broadsword, powerful but limited. Magic sword, super powerful, never runs out. Club, hammer, throwing daggers, axe. Yeah, I think you can throw it as well. Yeah. And oh look, it comes back. Chicken drumstick, not entirely sure what the hell you'd even need to use that for. 
Crossbow, longbow, flaming longbow, magic longbow, spear, lightning, lightning and good lightning. Okay, so these are the, this is the reason we're looking at this level. Cop shield, silver shield, gold shield, dragon armor. I don't even remember how you get that normally, but yeah, that, that also never runs out. <laughs> Poor villagers. So the interesting thing about this particular level is... Um, Hang on, can I can I get that back up? Oh yeah, you can see the chalice there actually says 59. Is that 59? Yeah. 59% already. Basically, if you kill the actual villagers, the chalice will go down. So what you actually need to do is use the good lightning in order to kind of heal them. Or, well not heal them, but just not hurt them basically. Although, this is quite terrifying to be around. <laughs> God, get get away from me, please. But yeah, it just kind of stuns them, keeps them away a little bit. While you actually try and find the place to go. I mean, if I was to... Can I just... Let's try regular lining. A good soul has been lost. And you see the chalice has now gone down to 54%. So yeah, you need to... Uh, you need to not kill everybody. Which took me a very long time to realize that that's what was happening. <laughs> but yeah, it's kind of it's kind of tough when you got when when you know everybody's chasing you, but still. Oh god. So you can kind of see that the uh, oh god oh jeez. Actually, do I even take damage? No, I'm invincible because super cheat mode is on. <laughs> So that's handy. Anyway, yeah, you can see how all the levels, you know, they like I say, they've got they've got a little something different about them. And this one to me was always uh, quite interesting. Especially for a game this old. Normally there isn't that much thought put into level design. Anyway, let's look at something else. The Asylum Grounds. Ah, oh, it is this level as well. All the uh, like I say, all good. Horror games, gotta have an asylum, and gotta have a good hedge maze in there as well. I mean, I can't be killed, but I feel better with the shield on. <laughs> you know? So let's take a look at what's going on in this level. Can I inspect this, please? This is the Garden of Zarak. Nothing here is as it first seems. To leave this maze, you must first seek out the one called Jack of the Green. Let's find Jack of the Green. Oh, here he is. I remember this guy. Greetings, Sir Fortiskill. My name is Jack of the Green. I am the master of riddles, and this maze is my domain. You are free to leave, but only once you've answered four riddles. Puzzles so fiendishly difficult, so perplexingly complex, that no man has ever solved them. Ha ha ha. Now, try my first riddle. I love this guy. <clears throat> At night they come without being fetched. By day, they are lost without being stolen. <laughs> I actually don't remember the answer to that, so let's just have a look around. <laughs> but yeah, this, this level was always one very memorable to me. Um, just because, again, the focus is not on... I mean, there are enemies to kill, but the focus is not on killing the enemies, it's... See if you can solve the thing! Oh yeah, all these, uh... Oh god. These, uh, these better shields have a little sort of dash move. Which is probably very good for speedruns, now that I think about it. Ah, stars! That's what it is. At night they come without being fetched. By day they're gone without being stolen. That makes sense. So I have to find stars. Aha! Well done, Sir Knight. But my star riddle was but a trifle. I always like to begin with an easy one. I wasn't even but trying. <laughs> you will not find my next conundrum so simple. Oh, really? 
I like I'll just moonwalk over to the I side there. I live for laughter. I live for the crowd. Without it, I am nothing. Okay, something to do with clowns. I remember. I remember this one. I remember there being a clown-related puzzle. Here we go. So yes, it's about making all of these. Happy. However, <laughs> it's not actually that easy. There we go. Oh, come on. That was so close. Did you see how close that was? It's like a second off. Ah. Oh. oh my god, that, yeah, that is... <laughs> Trial and error, I guess. Return in haste, Sir Knight, for I wish to see the despair on your face when you hear my next cryptic puzzler. So, puzzling. You'll never solve it. Even though they're actually rather easy. Please stop sticking the sword in my mouth. Like a tree, skin like the sea. A great beast I be, yet vermin frighten me. Ooh, I remember this one too. So this is the great beast. Big old elephant. But what we gotta do is lure a, uh, a mouse through here. Because elephants hate mice. Supposedly. I don't, I don't actually know. Yeah, you can sort of see how this is... Uh, this is... Prime example of this maybe isn't your average... Sort of action game. <laughs> Did you spot my bluff? I pretended that riddle was hard, but in truth it was obviously an elephant. I wasn't even trying. Time, I haven't even however, started I yet. I almost pity you. The answer to my next vexing enigma has eluded the finest minds of a whole generation. Come to me. I tolerate the moon and stars. I can't abide the sun. Banish me with torchlight and you'll see me turn and run. Hmm. I don't remember that one. But it almost certainly has something to do with this path that just opened up, so we'll try that first. Banish me with torchlight. Well, we got some torches here. Seems like a good place to begin. Not entirely... Aha! That's part of it. It's all coming back to me now. God, you push boxes so easily. Look at this. <laughs> I don't actually know what the answer to the riddle is, but this seems to be progress right here, so I'm willing to go with it. Darkness. To come up with that darkness one. That makes sense. Very well. Outrageous as it seems, my vast intellect has been matched by your badly decomposed brain. Return at once, and I shall give you your prize. It seems as though you've uh, solved the riddles that took me many, many, many hundreds of years to come up with in a mere afternoon. Well. Sucks to be me, I guess. You think you're so clever, don't you? Here you are, Sir Clever Clogs. I grant you free passage through my maze. Find your own way out. Yeah, he's not uh, he's not bitter or anything. And this is the way out. It's a chessboard. It's a bit of a weird chessboard, though, because it kind of talks. And they all sound kind of creepy. But you've, it's not really that complicated. You've just got to kind of make sure the right piece goes on the right color. Oh, 
unfortunately they, they then stay there. <laughs> They're kind of bad hitting these chess pieces, honestly. <laughs> I'm desperately trying to get this uh, green to move as well. I know it's a bishop, it can move diagonally, but it's not doing. Okay, well, I feel like the uh, the green is stuck for some reason. I guess that's just a bug. But fortunately, we have the cheat to just complete the level, so it's fine. <laughs> it's totally, totally fine. The exit gate was right there anyway. Oh, what does the Hall of Heroes actually do when you already have everything? I don't think you can actually see anyone. I think it's just sort of all open up. Oh, oh no, maybe it isn't. I guess you actually do have to get all of the uh, the chalice eye. That's plural of chalice. No, I guess you have to get all the uh, the chalices in order to in order to open up the rest of the hall of heroes. But there you go. You honestly, I don't. Do you, do you even have to see anyone to 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 actually leave this place? No, nope, you can just leave hall of heroes without collecting gift. Why not? Be a rebel, Sedan. You already have everything in life anyway. Be grateful for what you have. Well, it's been a long journey. Don't ask me how we got on this train. <laughs> the train to the, the last boss. How fortunate. We never thought you'd get this far. Me neither. Sir Fortescue, my old nemesis, so we meet again. I see that a century spent as worm food has done nothing to diminish your naive obsession with the freedom of Galomir. Oh yeah, I remember even this last level has a bit of a gimmick to it as well. Prepare to attack, my warriors. I want the dogs gnawing marrow from those bones within the hour. Ah! What is that, Fortescue? Your lucky cup? So based on however many chalices you've got, I think it turns some of these enemy soldiers into good guys. Or just creates your own. Oh yeah, that's what the good lightning is for as well. So you can keep your own guys alive. Like it heals them. Despite what it looks like, it does keep them alive. Having said that, I'm pretty sure that I can just kill all these guys anyway, considering I have unlimited health on this, but whatever. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can uh, let's let's see if we can get through this. Now, in this uh, in this instance, because we do have all the health in the world, uh, we don't actually need to keep any of these guys alive. So I think all that all that happens is they basically turn into into life potions, ready for the actual final boss. So if all of them are alive, then you get a lot of life potions. And if none of them are alive, you get no life potions for the final boss. But as you see now, they start teaming up. Yeah! This battle is ours! We are all free for the Tetany of Zarok! This takes a long time. If, uh... If they all live, so let's just skip past this, shall we? <laughs> you always were fortunate in battle, Fortescue. So yeah, not having the good lightning there means that battle is impossible. The late Lord Cardock. He eats people like you as calcium supplement. 
Seem to recall a similar boss in Dark Souls 2. I'm not saying they stole the idea from this, I'm just saying, you know. You do the math. Bugger. <laughs> I've just about had enough of your Oh, mentally. bugger it. Where is that spell? Ah, yes. No, not that spell. Oh. Oh, not right now. I think he's looking in the wrong book. Aha! Now I have it. So, this isn't going to go down in history as one of the best final boss designs of all time. But you know, it's there. <laughs> None shall defeat the mighty Zarok. <laughs> so prepare to die, Fortescue. Oh god. I haven't heard this guy yet. Alright, well I guess we'll just uh, wait for this to wear off. Oh! Okay. His, uh, you know, his attack pattern is not the most graceful thing in the world. Seems to just sort of jump up and then sort of thrust his, his crotch into you. Which, I'm not saying wouldn't work in a fight. I'm just saying I've never tried it. And you know, I, I don't think I don't think I'd be given the opportunity to try it. I'm not saying I wouldn't try it either. Also, just becoming a nuclear bomb would also probably work. But that's a bit beyond me. Ah, uh, curse you, Sir Knight! I am finally defeated. Yet, if I am to fail, then all shall perish. You are doomed, Fortescue. You will never leave this domain. <laughs> That's quite a brutal way to go. Okay, that debris clearly fell on me. Oh look, it's basically the ending of Lord of the Rings. See? He's normal. He's been de-zombified and he still looks creepy. <laughs> I'm not making this up. And now I've earned my rest.
the end. And there is another ending, based on whether or not you get all of the uh, chalices. And you know what? I don't think I've ever seen it, because I don't think I've ever actually bothered to do that. <laughs> uh, can, we, uh, can we skip this or not? We cannot. Oh well, never mind. Um, so yeah, that was a little look at Medieval. I don't know why I decided to do this. Because it was, you know, like I say, I was planning on making this over a year ago, so I don't know why I settled on this. But it's a game that, you know, it's very dear to me when I was younger. And, um... It's a lot of fun. It's 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 very arcadey. It's it's fun to play, and uh, I'm excited for the the remake of it because although it's maybe not as popular as something like Crash or Spyro, um, I still think it's gonna be fun. And if they're gonna handle it in the same manner that they've handled Crash and Spyro, then I think that's reason enough to be excited. But yeah, thanks for watching, folks. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. I'm going to open it up to you guys. I mean, is this something that you remember when you were younger? Is it something that you have any knowledge of whatsoever? Is it something that you used to play? Is it something that you played and you liked? Or you played and you didn't like? Did you not play it and you're excited for it anyway? What do you reckon? Uh, let me know, because I enjoyed it. Anyway, um, I'm going to I'm gonna go for now. I don't... I, yep, I can't skip through this. Um, and I can't quit because then my PS3 will crash. That's still a weird little thing that it likes to do. You can play whatever game you want, uh, but you try and quit and it will crash. Um, but yeah, <laughs> nothing ever works as it should in my house. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching, folks. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And I'll see you next time. See you later. Bye-bye-bye-bye-bye. Creepy child family.